A lot of Filipinos are reluctant to copy this sound because we tend to say, Oh my god, she's so maarte. This is going to be based on American English. That being said, this is going to be different from British, from Australian, and Canadian English. These are commonly used words in English, so if you get these right, you will already have a considerable improvement with your pronunciation. And the first one is the true T sound. So there are four different ways to pronounce letter T in American English. There's the D sound, like daughter, letter, heater, water. And then there's the glottal stop or the held T, like partner, fitness, certain, curtain, about, don't. And then there's the silent T or the vanishing T, like ballet, buffet, listen, wrestle. But these three sounds are going to be in a separate video because they are complicated. Today, I'm only going to talk about the true T. So the true T sound is used when a word starts with letter T. The way it sounds is like this. T, t. So it's like a combination between the, the sound T and S. So when you combine the two, it becomes T. The problem is, we don't really pronounce our T like this in Filipino language. Usually, when we say T, it's without the S sound. So, it becomes Tu, T, Table, Time, Talk. Instead of Tu, T, Table, Time, Talk. Instead of Teacher, it should be Teacher. Instead of Ter, it should be Ter. Technique, technique. Taxi, taxi. Tolerate, tolerate. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Together, together. For now, remember that if a word starts with the letter T, it has to be pronounced like T. And the second one, how do you pronounce this? If you said say, then you're correct. But how about this? If you said says, then you're wrong. This should be pronounced as says, says. So there are two differences there, the vowel sound and the S at the end is pronounced as Z. So say, says, say, says. I'm gonna talk about the vowel sounds in a different video, but for now, just remember that this is just how it sounds with the plural and the singular form of this verb. And the third one, how do you pronounce this? If you say off, then you're absolutely correct. How about this? Do you think they sound the same? Unfortunately, they don't. So the first one is off. And the second one should be pronounced as of, of. So the first one has a f sound, while the other one has a v sound. And also remember that the vowel sound of off is more open, more relaxed. So it's more like off, off, of. But with of, the opening of the mouth is a little smaller. So, notice the difference. Off, of, a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a. Uh. Number four, how do you pronounce this word? So, this should be pronounced as any, any, soft e, eh, any. It's not any, the same for anything. Anyone, anytime, anywhere. It should be pronounced as any, not any. Number five, how do you pronounce this word? So if you said prefer, then you're wrong. It should be prefer, prefer. So the stress should be at the second syllable, not on the first. I only found out about this, by the way, during my first training in a call center. So yeah, that's good to know.
And number six, and one of the most important, is the a、eh、sound. So a lot of Filipinos are reluctant to copy this sound because we tend to say, "Oh my God, she's so maarte." When you say a,、eh. and and that's because we don't have this sound in Filipino, but in American English, it is. This is definitely one of the most common sound that you have to copy if you want to to pronounce. The words right. These are some of the examples: am, and, cat, attitude. So in the Philippines, we usually say am, and, cat, attitude. So there's definitely a little bit more effort with the tongue and with the way your lips move.、Um, so compare it: ah. So there's barely any movement there. You just make an opening with your mouth, and that's it. But with a,、eh, you're moving your lips sideways. So if ah、uh, is just like this, it's very straight. Ah,、uh, this is the position of your tongue in ah.、Uh. If you're gonna say a,、eh, you're going to make a little bit of a curve with your with your tongue. So this is the tip of your tongue, and you're going to make a little bit of a curve here. A,、eh. and at the same time, you have to move your lips. Horizontally, have, sat, happened, sample, action, after, actually, actually, family, absolutely, absolutely, program, program. Number seven, and I bet a lot of you are going to be upset about this. How do you pronounce this? So if you say, if you said peso, peso, then you're wrong. It should be according to Google, peso, peso, and the plural is pesos, pesos. So s at the end should be pronounced as z. And I know it's weird because in my elementary and high school days, I grew up thinking that this is peso. Pesos, but no, unfortunately not. The first time that I heard this pronounced as pesos was from an HR lady, and I was just weirded out when I heard it from her. I was like, "What the heck is going on?" And the second time was from my Canadian client. So at this point, I just I just thought I probably should look this up and just know the correct pronunciation of this once and for all. And lo and behold, peso. Pesos. And number eight, the voiced and unvoiced th. So there are two different ways to pronounce th. One is th, and the other is th. To produce these sounds, you have to pay attention to two things. First is the placement of the tip of your tongue, and second is the air circulation. For the first th, you're gonna try to make the s sound. While putting the tip of your tongue under your two front teeth, so it's gonna look like this. Thought, moth, worth, thorough, brothel, mouth, strength. With the second th, however, you're basically trying to make the z sound while the tip of your tongue is under your two front teeth, so it becomes z. Though. With these brother, father, they. Number nine. How do you pronounce this word? If you said the, you're right. If you said the, you're right. So, how exactly do you know when to say the and when to say the? It really all depends on the word following the article the. So. If the next word starts with a vowel sound like a e i o u, then that's gonna be pronounced as the, the apple, the animals, the orange. But if it is a consonant like trainees, it's going to be the trainees, not the trainees, but the trainees. So here are some examples. The animals weren't so happy about the heat. Again, of course, the animals because a、eh、is a vowel sound. The heat, 
because <sighs> is a consonant sound. Another one. The trainees were introduced to the operations manager. So the trainees, because t is a consonant sound, and the operations manager, because a is a vowel sound. Now, question time. What about this one? Is it the FBI or the FBI? So if you answered the FBI, you're right. FBI starts with F, which is a consonant. But if you listen to the sound, it's actually not starting with a consonant. It actually starts with e, F. So it doesn't start with F, but it's starting with E. So this is going to be the FBI, not the FBI. Blank uniform is blank ugliest I've ever seen. So is it the uniform or the uniform? So if you answered the uniform, then you're right. It starts with a vowel, that's true, but if you listen to the sound again, it's actually not oo, but it's e, y. So the correct answer is the uniform, not the uniform. What about blank ugliest? Is it the ugliest or the ugliest? And again, if you answered the ugliest, you're right. It should be the ugliest because ugliest starts with a vowel sound. Number 10, how to pronounce acronyms or series of initials. So if you're pronouncing an acronym, the rule is you should always put the stress at the very last letter or the very last initial of an acronym. For example, BBB. So it's not just BBB. It should be BBB, CNN, US, UN, UK, PhD, MD, ASAP, IRS, FBI, DEA. It's not DEA, like what we do here in the Philippines. It's DEA. And number 11 and 12 is B and V and P and F. If you have been accepted in the call center, chances are you probably already know how to differentiate between these two, the B and V and f and p so i i don't think i need to talk about this right now and number 13 is a versus an so this is similar to the and the if the sound of the following word is a consonant then you're going to have to use a but if it is a vowel then it's going to be an or un here are some examples a curtain k is consonant so it's a uh, a glass a heater and then an umbrella an umbrella because a uh, is a vowel an ac an animal an orange now question time what about unicorn are you going to use a uh, or an so unicorn is going to be a uh, because even if it's spelled with a u which is a vowel it doesn't change the fact that u starts with a Y consonant sound. So it's going to be a unicorn, not an unicorn. X-ray. X is a consonant letter, but the sound of it actually starts with a, uh, e, eh, with e. Eh. So it's going to be an X-ray, an X-ray. Universal language. So again, like the unicorn, this is going to be a universal language. Our. So it's not a hour, but an hour. It's spelled with an H, but the sound is a. Uh. Number 14 is the schwa sound. Uh, uh. My mouth is barely open. Uh, uh. It's like saying, uh, I don't know. This is different from the regular ah, uh, where you have to open your mouth quite obviously. This is also different from the eh, uh, where you have to move your lips horizontally. Uh, uh, around, uh, round, around, small opening. National. So, na is an a sound, but sh and n are schwa sounds. So, national, national. Amazing. Uh, amazing. Amazing, amazing. So, it's not amazing, it's amazing. And number 15 is liaison. The shortest 
possible way that I could describe liaison is instead of saying, where is it? Where is it? It becomes, where is it? Where is it? So the boundaries of the words are more blended. I need a drink of water. So instead of saying, I need a drink of water, instead of pronouncing them separately, everything becomes blended. So with need ending with a D and the following letter A, instead of being pronounced as I need a, it becomes I need a. Instead of drink of, it becomes drink of, drink of, drink of water. So the consonant and the vowel are just blended. So the sounds are connected instead of separated. She's been an amazing employee. So without the blending, it is, she's been an amazing employee. But with the blending, it becomes, she's been an amazing employee. Binan, it becomes binan instead of bin an. Been an amazing employee. Binan, an, an amazing employee instead of been an amazing employee. But you see, liaisons don't only occur with consonant and vowel combination. It also occurs with vowel plus vowel combination. Here are some examples. I have no idea. So no ends with a vowel and idea starts with a vowel. So instead of saying no idea, it becomes no idea. So there's this invisible W that's inserted between words. So instead of hello everyone, it becomes hello everyone. There's the inserted invisible W between the words. The experience was amazing. So with the experience, there is an invisible Y sound that's inserted between the and experience. So it becomes the experience instead of the experience. Instead of go away, it becomes go away. Liaisons, by the way, also apply to acronyms. So instead of saying LA, it becomes LA. US, US. IRS, IRS. FBI, FBI. And this also applies, by the way, to numbers. So some Americans, by the way, say O instead of zero when dictating their number. So they're going to say something like 506, 608, 101. I know it's complicated. It's super complicated. And I didn't even want to make this video because I've always been an advocate of listening as your main way of learning a language. When you learn a language mainly through listening, you're learning the language in bigger units. You're not learning it in syllables or in words, which are small units. No, you're learning it in phrases and in sentences. Because phrases and sentences are bigger units, you have a much better chance of learning the language instead of just focusing on the syllable or individual words. And listening, by the way, promotes spontaneity in your speech, which is very important if you want to converse with a native English speaker. With spontaneity on your side, you don't even have to think about the rules when you speak. You just speak. Can you imagine how many rules are involved by just saying a single sentence? There's a lot of rules involved in that, and you don't want to be always, always thinking about the rules when you speak. That, that is why I'm telling you right now to not stress too much about these rules because the act of rigor, rigorously studying the grammar rule, the pronunciation, is the very reason that you're not going to be able to speak fluently and more spontaneously. That being said, I think guides like this are also important because there are times when we're just not sure how to say this word and we just need a refresher. We just need a reliable source. And of, co of course, we have to ask Google about it. But I really just want you to make listening as your foundation. Do not make guides like this as your foundation for learning a language. Listening is the key. And another issue with just memorizing the rules is that English is a very complicated language. There's going to be this one rule, but there's going to be a ton of exceptions. So there's never a clear-cut rule on how to pronounce certain words because, for example, bulk and walk, they both end with LK. 
With bulk, you pronounce the L, but with walk, the L is silent. So, you know, those, those rules with a ton of exceptions are just going to make you crazy and probably even discourage you from learning the language. So, again, listening is more important. I'm going to link the video up here where I explain everything about how effective listening is when learning a language. All right, that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.